So all of a sudden I became more or less David's manager, David's right-hand man, David's PR, David's brand developer. Let's see, but they all kind of interweave. So what happened was, is I started my parkour journey, started doing parkour, trying to be a parkour athlete. Uh, it was really early. There wasn't a lot, a lot of ways to make money, but I got some sponsors and that led me to starting a parkour gym. And then I started my parkour clothing company, Take Flight. So I was running two companies at the same time. Awesome. And I had this idea to go to work with David Bell. So David Bell is the founder of parkour at the time, especially in the, in the late 2000s, he was like a... He was revered in the parkour community as as an immortal almost, you know, like the Michael Jordan of parkour, the like the Bruce Lee of of this new sport. Like people would almost talk about giving their left arm just to meet him. Like there was so much reverence and respect for this man. And I thought, well, if I'm ever going to really understand parkour, I should probably go work with him or something. And so this idea percolated and long story short, I was able to get in touch with his team, propose these ideas of working together. And they said, they basically green lighted me moving to France to work with David and become David's somehow like North American representative. That was kind of the idea on the table. And we had a couple ideas. One idea was to grow my, to help have him come on board, to help grow my company, take flight through an endorsement role. We, I wanted to help grow his brands. And then I also, there were some ideas like um, a film festival that they had in the works at the time. And then me at on a personal level. My dream was to work with him on film. So we had, clearly the connection was parkour. I was running a gym. Like I was loyal to to his version of parkour when other people were trying to kind of adopt this other type of parkour. I was loyal to kind of the original version. There was branding, there was clothing, there was shoes. There was all these things that we had. But my heart of hearts was, my dream is to work on films with David. So I moved to France. The problem was David didn't speak English and I didn't speak French. I learned French and then David's right-hand guy at the time, a guy named Guy Janodet, a fatherly figure to David, passed away suddenly, more or less. And basically there was this void and somehow I was in the right place in the right time and I stepped into the void. So all of a sudden I became more or less David's manager, David's right-hand man, David's PR, David's brand developer like uh, inter integrated with his family. So in, in 2011, I spent Christmas. It was like Christmas Eve. It was David, David's mom and me. And we had Christmas, we had Christmas together. So I, was, I became a part of his family, like his most inner circle. Absolutely. And so anyway, we had all these dreams and we, we would in lease, which is the, the birthplace of parkour. Like he was living in lease. Then I was living in lease. Like we'd go on walks at two in the morning and talk about like ideas we had for building brands and for his legacy and all sorts of different things he wanted to do as, as an artist and a creative. And working in films, of course, was a big part of that. We talked about the films we would make together. We talked about the ideas for films. We talked about the choreography we had for films. We had all these big ideas. And it was very self, it was evident that we were going to be working together for, for in my mind, clearly decades to come. Clearly we had formed a brother friendship uh, friendship at that level, we were aligned uh, on on parkour, on his legacy, on the legacy of his father, on the origins of of the sport, on and on all these different things. It was very obvious that we were we were vibing and we were we were moving ahead with some great ideas. And where he was the artist with the legacy, I was the businessman with the execution. And so it was right. this this amazing partnership that was blossoming in awesome ways. Cool. So he also knew of my desire to be an actor. And at the time, I had never done any acting. I'd never taken acting classes, but I had this thing in me that I wanted to be in in movies, in in films. And I thought that I thought that either parkour was my way in, or now I thought that David was my way in, because sure. David was really good friends with Luc Besson, who's more or less the Steven Spielberg of France. He's the most well known filmmaker in France, and he has a studio and all these things. So anyway, long story short, these films started to come up, and it was obvious that I was going to work with him on these films, and. Uh, but it, it simply didn't happen for various reasons. The first film was a film called The Family, which is a film with Robert De Niro. And David, mm -hmm. David was brought on to be a stunt director. And he also had a very small role in the film. And that was a film that I was supposed to have a role in or work with him in some capacity. And that was vetoed at the last minute. 
and then then Brick Mansions came along, and that was another thing where I was supposed to, to be involved with the film and work with him and be on set. And since he was the star in it, along with Paul Walker, he's like, I'm going to have some authority to to find some small part for you, for finding you to have a way to be involved with the film, whatever it may be. And then that didn't come to fruition either. And I think that some of that had to do with maybe the integrity um, in David's life. I think that David always spoke and thought with his heart, but he didn't always follow through with the things he said. And some of it happened with maybe the relationship started to get strained because I moved back from France to the United States. And so there wasn't this daily communion with him anymore. And so, so when things didn't line up perfectly, it was easy for him to kind of just say, I'm not in charge, which he wasn't. So it was super disappointing, but the film came and went and I wasn't able to be a part of it. And yeah, that happened. Now, a year later, oddly enough, I had an agent at the time. And a year later, I got an audition for an NBC show called Grimm. And I'd never acted before, but for some, I had the talent for it. And I laid down a great audition and they gave me a, a recurring role in this national television show, Grimm. So um, yeah. and from there, my acting career, you know, took its path. So what I learned was I didn't need David. I didn't, I didn't need this parkour in. I just, I could be a great actor. But all this is to say is that, yeah, I mean, it was, I was supposed to be with David on The Family with Robert De Niro. It was supposed to be on the film Brick Mansions with Paul Walker. And it just didn't happen. And it was a big disappointment. But the bigger disappointment was that David and I stopped working together. So that brother friendship had a falling out and that was really tough. But sure. Yeah, anyway.